Yeah, look at Let's see how far you got. We'll pay, I'll pay points for your progress. Uh, number six, x is not approaching infinity. We skip that. So we got to look to factor. A uh, huge hint for the AP test. They don't usually ask you to do factoring that is really very complex. Uh, so the first thing you should always look for before you do the whole Mr. Recky, hip, Mr. Recky, hippo butt, hippo butt thing, okay? Yeah. Um, you should, I always feel uncomfortable setting that for some reason. Uh, anyway, you should look to see if there is a factor that can be simply taken out. Uh, it's mathematic, I think, look for the greatest common factor. So raise your hand, please, if you can see in the numerator anything that could be simply factored from the numerator. Do you see anything that could be factored from the numerator? There we go. Ian, what do you got? How many saw that an x could be taken from the numerator? Point for the room, two for five. Ian. So that means I get an x. Now I'm going to be left with five. Subtract x. Uh, subtract 4x squared. And I can do the same thing on the bottom. Pull out an x. The 3 plus x uh, plus 2x cubed. Okay, here's what you should notice now. This does appear to be perhaps something that could be factored. It's what's called a quadratic, this item in blue. But this item on the bottom in blue is not a quadratic. So for the AP test, it's like 0.1% chance that's going to factor. So I'm not going to try. Like I'm just going to keep going because it just really is probably not factorable. But, uh, let's check the whole room again. So you're going to vote with your hand. The numerator here, don't worry about counting 1 as a factor. We always consider 1 to be a factor. How many factors are in the numerator? Show me. Let's see if we're making progress here. How many things are being multiplied on the top? How many things are multiplied on the top? Right here. The orange that I highlight go like this. Show me. It's getting better. We're still confused for some. Well, now we're getting better. So if you're doing this, give yourself two. There are two factors. So back to Emma's comment, two more for Emma. That means we can split the factors into two separate fractions. So we can say this is the limit. As x approaches zero, you can take the x factor on the top, the x factor on the bottom, write them separately. Anything about today's discussion feels like, I'm not sure I really get that. Uh, come after school, come at lunch if I'm here. We'll just talk about it. I don't do a lot of demoing. I do a lot of listening to see what it is that is mixing you up, and then I can help you. So, questions? Uh, trick questions. See if can get it. If x were to equal exactly 0, <coughs> So if x were exactly 0, please raise your hand if you can tell me, what would we get when we plug a 0 into that formula? Hands up. If x is exactly 0, we plug a 0 into this formula, because that's it's all about x and y. Here's the x. The square box is the y. If we have an x of 0, what's the y going to be? Let's go with Macy Warner. Raise your hand if you knew it. Point, 2 for Macy. Because a 0 divided by 0, we talked about earlier, that's undefined. Perfect. Another question. Raise your hand and answer this. In this particular case, do we care that when we plug in 0, we get undefined? Hands up. There you go. In this particular case, do we care that when we plug in 0, we're going to get undefined? Do we care? Let's go to Jackson. Okay, raise your hand if you were thinking what he just said. 
we don't care because we don't want x to equal zero. We want x to be close to zero. Point and then two for Jackson. Okay. So when x is close to zero, this is one. We can do the next step in our head without writing so much. Raise your hand, please. When x gets really close to zero, what's that going to be very close to equaling? Hands up. Just think it through. You can do it. When x gets very, very close to zero, what will the purple computation give us, Rosie? So this is going to be really, really small. This will also be extremely small. But you're doing great. The three things add together. Five plus small plus five. No, no, say it again. Five plus small plus small, really close to five. Yeah. Won't be exactly five, but it will be very, very close. How many do that? Point two for Rosie. Well done. Uh, show me on your hand. What's the bottom going to be when x is close to zero? Show me on your hand like this. Show me on your hand. What's the bottom going to equal when x is very, very? So what's this green going to be? When x is very, very close to zero. Show me your hand. When I do this hand thing, everybody hopes the answer is like 10. But in this case, the answer is 3. So if you're doing this, you give yourself 3. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Go, Jack. All right. I'm just complimenting your enthusiasm. Oh, yeah. It's good. Yes. <laughs> Dope. Solid. Lit. Let's go. OK. Yeah. I'm trying to say some word that you understand. So. Oh, yeah. Thanks, John. Hey, who are you? You bad guys. It's what like, um, calculus is just a new way to deny anyone. Well said. Well said. Question. Yeah, Katie will come to you. Just kidding. Um, questions. Awesome. Look. You know when x gets close to zero now, you have one right here. One multiplied by five on the top, three on the bottom. The overall limit is going to be five thirds. Questions. Oh, now we just do the horizontal asymptote stuff. So move this out of the way. Okay, once again, factoring did not change the problem, it just made it easier to understand. So there's no reason to go back to the beginning. We can start our work basically here. But even simpler, we can say we're looking for the limit as x approaches infinity. Uh, x divided by x, when x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, is still going to be 1. So we just have this, 5 minus x minus 4x squared, all divided by 3 plus x plus 2x cubed. And now the thinking starts over at the beginning again. We're finding a limit, so we're supposed to compare, and the limit it does have x approaching infinity, so we want to compare terms that add. So show me on your hand how many terms are in the numerator. Show me on your hand how many terms are in the numerator. Right here, how many terms in the numerator? Yeah, they're terms because they're adding. They're not factors. Uh, if you're doing this, give yourself three more. That's a good day. I have no ability to hold back on the extra credit. Every year, I'm like, I'm going to keep it down this year. See? Threshold. Um, heads up. What is the dominant term of the numerator? Kennedy Hodgins. Uh, compliments to Kennedy for noticing it has to be the negative because we're looking at things that are added. So how many knew that it was negative 4x squared? 0.2 for Kennedy. So you write equal. Make sure you're doing the equal sign so the grader can give you points because he can follow your work. So we just have negative 4x squared divided by positive 2x squared x cubed on the bottom. Uh, one more thing. Oh.
Say it out loud, please. Is this numerator best seen as factors or terms? Say it. Factors. factors. Negative 4 multiplied by x multiplied by x. Similar on the bottom. So what I would do then is one more step. I would write, I'm getting too low on the board, sorry. Pull this over here. I would say equals the limit as x approaches infinity. Uh, let's see, we can break up the factors. So we have negative 4 divided by negative, two, uh, sorry, divided by positive 2. Then we would have an x squared divided by an x squared. And finally, we would have a 1 over x. trouble. So here's the answer. Right here, so I'm going to talk to Brock and give him some points. So right here, Brock, do you see factors or terms? Good. I see 2 multiplied by x, multiplied by x, multiplied by x. So I'm free to break them into as many fractions as is useful. Does that help? Two more, please. Uh, do we have to show all our work of like um, minus 4 over 2 and then x over the x squared. Good question, Jack. Let me finish. Um, I'll show more work at the board usually just so no one gets lost. And then I'll kind of point to where I feel like you have to show. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah. Um, two for Jack. Anybody else? Awesome. So now, as x grows forever, this is going to equal negative 2. This is going to equal 1, but this ends up. <coughs> if x grows forever, what's that last blue rectangle going to get close to equaling? There we go, ends up. What's going to happen, to the, what's going to happen right here on the end? Peyton. How many knew that? Point, 2 for Peyton. That's going to head towards 0. So it doesn't matter what the other two blue boxes are. Whatever times zero is going to get really close to zero. So this limit is zero. If I were heading towards negative infinity, I'm going to get the exact same result. One over something that's huge and negative is negative, but it's very, very close to zero. So now I know my answer is as x approaches infinity, y is approaching zero. As x approaches negative infinity, y is also approaching 0. So I already contradicted myself. Uh, I said something earlier that was incorrect. There is definitely a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. That's why I don't like to use tricks. If I just go through the process, they won't trick me. Questions? back to Jack's question about what we have to write. Um, <coughs> I think it is extremely hard to do the problem without making an error if you don't write either the purple or the orange. I don't think you necessarily have to write both. Like I think it's perfectly valid to say, oh, I can see that I'm going to pull out an X. I'm going to keep them separate, so I'm going to get to the orange. So if you leave off the purple, you're fine. Or you might say, I have the purple. I don't really need to write the orange. I can see what's happening. Is that fair? Yeah. Um, so you could have gotten to this answer, I think, with just either the purple or the orange. Um, after that, you can actually do the rest of the problem in your head if you want. Yeah, the key is getting either the purple or the orange on paper. Okay. If you have that much, they're not going to take off points okay. if you have the correct result. And then with the green, um, with the negative 4x squared uh, over 2x uh, cubed, did I just go straight to negative 2 over x? Yes, that'd be fine. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Good question, Jack. Two more. That's what I try to emphasize in the sense of this. Hey, everybody, look, 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 look. And they keep hammering you on having good notation. Good notation doesn't mean you have to show everything. One key thing, though, is you've got to show the equal sign. So that you can show that, hey, this is the same as this, and the grader can follow what you're doing. Don't draw arrows. That's not correct notation, except in rare cases. Just this is the same as this. Good 
be out. Oh, please, later. How does ex oppose Is it because... Say one more time. How does ex oppose Is it because that's... Oh, right. So in this problem, so it's like all the problems we work with, it's just a bunch of X's and Y's. But in this problem, they're telling you, okay, if you want to find a Y value, you should use this formula for any X you want. But they would like us to investigate what's happening when the X coordinate is almost zero. That's why that's what we're focused on in this section here, is figuring out what's happening to the Y value right here when the X value is almost zero. So if it's two, it'd be almost zero. Correct. So this is at X approaching two. We'd be doing the same sort of thinking. It's just that we would be analyzing what's happening when X approaches two. In fact, the problem would be very, very similar, except for the step where we kind of plug in a two to see what happens. Okay. Did that help? Yeah, okay, two more. Anybody else? Awesome.